Awesome. All right. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. Uh, my name is Kara Folkerts. I am a senior guide with Aspire Adventure Running. Super excited to continue with these conversations with badass women. Uh, all month long, we've been hosting these conversations in collaboration with our Women's Adventure Scholarship that we released. We have one more week for women to apply, but basically through our scholarship program and these conversations, we wanna continue amplifying the voices of badass women on the trails, um, empowering each other, lifting each other up, hearing the ups and downs, twists and turns, all sides of being a, a woman on the trail. Um, so I'm super excited for today's guest. We have Danielle Snyder. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research and she is definitely a badass. Um, she recently completed the Cocopelli Trail and um, within, it's Cocopelli, right? That's how you yeah. pronounce it? Yeah. Awesome. Um, and with that, um, she was raising money for women who work in climate change. Um, she's also was the first woman to set the FKT on the Oregon section of the Pacific Coast Trail. And um, through that raising funds for um, women to also just, or sorry, to not raise funds, but um, empowering women to uh, get out and just go after these really lofty goals. And um, she's done a lot of just really, really incredible um, feats in the mountains. And she also is the founder of Inner Drive, um, Inner Drive Athlete, which she um, coaches athletes to not only be physically strong, but also find mental strength and just be a more well-rounded holistic athlete. Um, so super excited to have this conversation with you today um, and welcome. Thanks, I'm excited to be here. Cool, so if you do wanna give us um, any more kind of to your bio and background, I'd love to hear a little bit more about you. Yeah, you did, I mean, you did a really <laughs> comprehensive job explaining it. Like, what else can I say? I have a dog, her name is Petra, she's from yes. Puerto Rico. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that you know I think it's funny because I was so before we chatted I wrote to you about a couple of the things that I've like done and I set my intention to do the FKT for the Coca Pelli trail mm. and I actually didn't get the FKT and I like to this has actually been one of the, like my most exciting accomplishments non-accomplishments that I like to talk about now um where I was really scary to during it to know like being on pace for so long and then falling off so far that I know I like to talk about it all the time. So I wanted to like add that caveat or like asterisk of like, yeah, I was supposed to be an FKT and I totally bombed. Um, and just share that. I guess that was, that's important to me to talk about. <laughs> yeah, no. And I'd love to, I think as we continue having the conversation, um, talk more into all of that as well and kind of what role, because I think it is easy to have these really lofty goals and whether we accomplish them or not, like it still is part of our story and it creates us, um, it, I guess just creates more experience and opportunity and insight into why we do the sport and why it's important in our lives. And again, like the ups and the downs because they sure. both play their role. Um, cool. And as a society, I think we often highlight things once they're magical and beautiful. And like, we don't talk a lot about the failures like we might talk about like oh she tried three times and then she got it on the fourth time but we don't talk about like in the midst when you don't know what it's gonna look like or what your career is gonna look like we talk about the other side so I'm really trying to normalize like failure and falling on your face by talking about it as much as I can yeah and that's I'm really excited to dive into um I mean even looking at the work you've done with inner drive athlete and really focusing on the mental health aspect I am a huge proponent for that and get really passionate about it as well. And I think it is really easy to highlight all the beautiful, wonderful sides of trail running. But yeah, like you said, there's like a lot of stuff that isn't talked about um, that is really hard to deal with. So if we continue having those conversations of the difficulties involved, then I think it opens up more people to be like, oh, like me as well. Like it's not just me. And yeah, yeah. Cool. So um, with our scholarship program, we ask the women three different questions, and I'm going to ask you those same questions. Um, so to start, um, why do you love to run and kind of what role has it played in your life? It's such a challenging question to answer. <laughs> um, and so let me just think for a second, like what totally. running has done for me? So in complete disclosure, running hasn't always been a healthy avenue for me. Um, I think it started, well, it definitely started healthy when I started running when I was like 12, because I had a lot of energy. Um, 
And as a person who trends on like type A with not being type A on other things, like it's very weird, but um, I quickly like saw my performance getting better and I became more fixated on time and goals and I was road running and losing weight. And I, I think there's been a lot of experiences with women where kind of the snowball effect almost happens and you don't even necessarily recognize what you're doing as it's happening. And then like, I got pretty sick. Um, and so I had to pause my running career when I was in my early twenties. Um, and I'm so grateful for that pause and getting treatment and recovering from having an unhealthy relationship with food and running. Um, Subsequently, running has also become one of the main reasons outside of like relationships and life, but it propelled, it like helps me be strong because I want to feel competent and capable and safe in the mountains. And that's where I feel most free. So it's been this like long transition of running to me feels like coming home. And I was able to like rebuild a relationship with running that prioritizes health and happiness. And sometimes that means um, not running. Sometimes that means running really hard, um, but, it, it, but it has helped me build a connection with my body. So I'm, yeah, so running is complicated, <laughs> but on the flip side, it has been one of the most like fulfilling things that I have introduced to my life. That's incredible. Um, you basically laid out my entire history of running as well. Um, starting to run when I was 11 with my dad, started racing, getting smaller, go getting fast and then developing an eating disorder and needing to um, also take a step away from it in my early twenties because it was like that snowball effect where it did start with such a good intention yeah. and then changed and um and then refining that love of like oh i started this with a healthy mindset like where where did that go when i like that child like yeah. joy to just run and switching to trail running and it's like oh it's about being outside and connection and and again now kind of like balancing like that making sure that when you run it is with that healthy intention of like i want to feel strong and competent in the mountains and like love my body for what it does um to bring me to these places so I definitely feel like, yeah, I'm glad I got that you're you were talking about it. Because I was like, that <laughs> was for you when you were saying it. Cause I was like, you're basically saying my history as well. Yeah. So, well, yeah. and I, I, I mean, I, again, like, I think that's something that we gloss over where it's like, oh, we were sick and now we're healthy. And now our, this is our relationship with running. And it's like, no, I have to check myself. Like hmm. I do big days in the mountain and I, it's not perfect but you know I'm definitely healthy and I manage it but it's still you know it's human nature to have to like balance these things yeah exactly um and it sounds like even just with um the work you do with inner drive athlete it's very focused around um not only being a strong physical athlete but that mental piece because I think it's so easy to be doing like the proper stretches, foam rolling, sure. long day, like your short run, like your hills and tempo and strength training, but it's like, are doing that mental training and making sure that you're doing that check-in with yourself. Cause that's such a big part. Um, so what kind of within the work you do there, do you do specific when you work with your athletes? So it depends on each athlete and what they're bringing to the table. I mean, I think one of the main things is learning and helping people know how to respond to different situations and become more resilient as a result of having a hard time. Um, it kind of reminds me of like, so I ran the bear a hundred miler um, back in, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago. And I'd been doing all this, my own like mental training and I felt physically as strong as I've ever been and mentally as strong as I've ever been. And at mile 20, I bonked. Um, and I cried from mile 20 to mile 80, like straight oh. tears the entire time. And I remember like that, when I think about it, the mistake that I made is not being prepared to have negative thoughts. Like my mental training had only focused on like 
feeling good and being positive. And that's just not the reality of what shows up on those really hard endurance days. And so we, in my program, we talk a lot about like, okay, how are you going to respond when A, B, or C happens? How can you encourage yourself rather than go to your default, which for most of us is to beat ourselves up. So a lot of practice. And the cool Mm -hmm. thing about this is there's so much, there are so many opportunities to practice like all the time, day to day, you know, I'm like, when I wake up practice, (laughs) like, so uh, people think they just need to do it when it's running, but generally these trends trickle into our life. And so I'm asking athletes to be more aware and respond so they know how to do it. And then it translates into adventures and running. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, so, so true. Um, do you, did you find like when it sounds like when you started running, when you were 12, what was kind of, did you feel like you had mentorship and support like the what you offer for people now, did you ever feel like you had one person who really kind of helped you along the way or different inspirations or yeah, different people along your journey? That's interesting. I want to say yes. And like name a really strong woman role model. Um, but I, I did not have a strong woman role model runner. Um, the runners that like immediately come to my mind were like very traditional road runners. Um, Subsequently, like as an adult, there are a lot of women runners that I admire, but there's no one like I hold on like a pedestal. Mm. And I, I think it's more because I know people are human and I know that they're going through things. And so I'd much rather level out the playing field and not about like competition, but knowing like no no one has it all together. Like we are all just trying our hardest to get by. And now I kind of look at these people who are vulnerable and I'm like, that's who I want to be like. Like the women who show up and support and encourage and aren't scared of getting beat and aren't scared of beating other people. Like those are now who I am most drawn to. Um, But growing up, no, I mean, even our coaches encouraged behaviors that were like peak status at that age. So it didn't matter Mm. if you were killing your body or not getting your period or any of those things. It was like, it's worth it. We want you to perform your best. As long Um, as you're going fast, all else doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So you, this is for the team. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm sure that probably propels you even more um, with the coaching you do to be that like good mentorship and all that you do was that your experience too not to put you on the spotlight yeah no 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 um yes very much so um I feel like I that was one reason why I um did quit racing for a little while um I um I was super grateful my dad was actually my running coach and he kind of knew everything so I was super transparent with him and he was such a solid um, support system for me Um, but outside of that, um, I think because he knew what I was going through, he really got it. Um, but elsewhere, not the case, like all my other sport coaches was just like, okay, like time base, what was this? And like, again, with the period and all these things that, um, were being pushed under the rug as well. And like injuries and stuff like that. It's like, well, as long as you're placing well in the races, like it doesn't matter. So yeah. So it is like needing to change those, um, narratives moving forward. And I think by doing, um, just by speaking about this and having it be like, no, this is actually something that needs to be brought up and brought to the surface. So people can recognize that, um, it doesn't need to continue this way. (laughs) Yeah. And that girls, women can be successful with still having healthy bodies. Yeah, exactly. Um, this, this whole conversation kind of dives into then my next question, which is um, any challenges or barriers um, that has made it difficult for you um, personally as you've ventured out on these runs and whether it be um, in the backcountry setting, um, specific to you as a female, um, but just any challenges that you've come, kind of come across in your running career? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's like so many things that pop <laughs> to my head, which is, I think, not unique. To my experience as a runner, a lot of females, mm. 
and males, I feel like have this, um, but it's interesting because I've had a lot of experiences where people, I'm trying to think about the best way to say this. People have like doubted or questioned my ability. Um, so like my first hundred miler that I did, I chose to do, I am tough, which is like this pretty tough, <laughs> gnarly mountain race. So that was kind of my mindset of like, you know, yeah, it's going to be hard no matter what. And yeah. I remember like talking about it to a few different like guy friends and friends um who were like automatically were like that's a horrible idea you're never gonna finish and that mm. just sprinkles I feel like in to existence of like being told you're starting a race too fast by not, by a guy and I it's all like I don't think it's mal intended I think that it's like trying to be helpful um mm. and at the same time like when you see a female runner running down a hill fast, please don't tell me to slow down. Like I, th that has just happened so many countless times of like males just being like, oh, be careful, it's rocky. I'm like, yeah, I just climbed up this mountain. I recognize that. I got it, yeah. <laughs> or are you here alone? Are you like out here alone? Um, should you be? So I think that like, again, the intention is like, well-meaning but it is so jarring as a woman who does explore in the back country to have these experiences um and then they can like it's normal and so I like to talk about it because it shouldn't be normal yeah. um women should feel safe and have a an ability to be in the back country um and I you know on top of that I did recently have a pretty jarring experience running. Um, and since speaking out about that, I've heard many women talk about their own experiences um, and similar things happen and how we kind of normalize it. And so um, I am happy to share, but I also don't want to like if, pause. Yeah, it's totally up to you, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah, no, I, I it's helpful for people to talk about these things totally um, yeah yeah I guess like one of the things I like to caveat with this is that I as a female runner you are not or I don't think that anyone is not used to being like catcalled maybe followed too closely beep that you know being scared and that has always been my experience since running as a kid like I've been followed before and I've had to like run into someone's garage like I've picked up mail and I'm always aware of my surroundings um but I was running in Portland on a trail recently and this guy it was early morning I was doing speed work it was probably 6 a.m and there was a guy I guess jumped out from somewhere on a bike and started screaming that he was going to kill me and I know the trail pretty well and I ended up like knowing that there was a turn um, and that if I jumped off a ravine to the right and turn off my headlamp that I could outmaneuver him in the ravine, I guess. I'm not like, I not really sure what I was thinking, but that's what I did. Um, and he kept screaming at me and he kept going the other way. And I ended up just bushwhacking down to a, a river and then like calling one of my friends and she came out and met me. Um, and even though like the incident overall wasn't that long, the subsequent effects of it, of me not feeling like safe on the trails or safe in my van, um, being a single woman has been really fascinating to and horrible to experience of like, if that guy gave me a warning, like he was very vocal. He let me know he was coming. If I had been not paying attention or he didn't tell me that he was going to kill me and he just attacked me I, I don't know what would have happened um and so I I guess that's something that like women as runners have to be aware of that like I can't run with headphones if a man comes too closely behind me when I'm running right now I'm I'm like what are they doing and they chasing me um you know if someone doesn't say hi to me on the trail, I wonder like, are they going to swing around? 
Whereas before, like I had, didn't have that like acute sense and it's dissipating, but I do feel like that, that has been one of my major challenges is I always run alone in the dark and I haven't been able to do so. So it's, it, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that happened to you. Um, that's yeah. Super scary. And I'm glad that it didn't get any worse. Um, but it's still, like you said, it's like the residual effect from that and how moving forward on the trails, it's like, oh, should I be questioning my safety now? And if it's something that maybe you didn't think of to that extent, but then you're on this like quote unquote safe city trail and, um, and you are scared for your life like that. I think it's as hard as it is to bring it up. I think it's so important. We do talk about it. So it isn't just pushed under the rug and being like, no, this isn't okay. Um, and yeah, acknowledging all the little things that women have to do on the trails to feel safe, whether it's like, if you listen to music, you only have one headphone in. Um, right. Like when I, if I'm running on the road to a trail, I'm going um, on opposite side of the traffic so I can see who who's coming towards me versus if someone's behind. And like you said, it's like, okay, do I not do night runs anymore? Or do I have to think of how I would strategically get out of this situation? Like those aren't things that we should be having to think about, you know? And especially when you think you're in a quote unquote safe place, like a city in Portland or something. So, yeah. yeah. And following discussing it, which is why I'm continuing to discussing it, so many women have reached out and had similar experiences. Like yep. this, it felt really shameful to talk about because life, I don't know. I just did. That was my response to it. And I am more shocked by like women who haven't had this experience, which is yep. Yep. like, that's not okay that we as runners have to be so vigilant. Like Yep. There's something wrong with our system that male runners aren't can, have to consider this, which I'm thankful for them that they don't have to. But at the same time, like, shouldn't we be afforded the same safety? Yeah. Yeah. And I think one thing too, um, I mean, I don't know if this is your experience, but um, with my own like having a similar experience to that and I definitely felt the shame of kind of like oh I don't want to bring this up like I don't know if I should because I think sometimes society is just like well like you were running at night so like you shouldn't have like you shouldn't have been out if you were there with a headlamp like you shouldn't be doing that you should know better but that already just kind of shows that it's like but why can men run outside at night and that be okay so right. it's kind of like I feel like sometimes there is the shame to talk about our experience because it may be twisted the other way, but it's like, no, we need to actually talk about it and then have all these other women come out and also sadly say that they've also had similar experiences, but then continuing to hopefully um, create a conversation around it or continue the conversation around it so that change can actually be made on a deeper level. Yeah. 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 So getting real uncomfortable talking about things that should be talked about, but also stretch yourself when you're having these conversations like I know my heart was I've talked about this a couple of times on podcasts since it's happened but my heart beats faster and I you know it's it's uncomfortable because yeah like the the thoughts of like did I overreact would he have actually hurt me or like mm. you know so many people have said to me very kindly like you know I'm so glad you're okay and back to normal and I'm like I can't like I'm not running alone in the trails at night anymore or in the morning. I'm a morning runner, yeah. you know? So it's, it's just like, and, and yeah, I, yeah, I just, um, I, especially like in, in wake of that woman in London. Um, mm, yeah. Like it's yeah. just, there's just so many layers of complications of, okay, this is, this is our time to talk about these things and to start to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think acknowledgement is such a huge piece of it as well. Um, yeah, uh, I did want to ask you as well, um, just based on like your experiences with running and everything, where are you at now with balancing everything, balancing the job you do, balancing a running practice, balancing just taking care of yourself and your mental health and everything? Like, how do you put that all together? <laughs> oh, I'm so human. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I struggle. Yeah. Um, 
it's a work in progress. It, you know, I would love to say, oh yeah, I have it all together. And like, I have such an equal balance, um, but I don't. Um, I have a coach who helps keep me in check. And I also try to be very mindful of like, having higher mileage weeks and then going down and then having higher mileage weeks. And then sometimes um, if things are really hard, taking a day off just because it's hard um, and talking about it. So I'm like the first person to admit like, this is a practice, it's not perfection. And I, everyone who is in my close circle knows about kind of my struggles. And also I ask them to call me on my stuff. And so when I start to get a little crazy, which happens because, I mean, I love it. And it's also like my brain, um, I stop my run short. So like, sometimes it will be like the plan says 13 miles and then I'll do like 12.75. And like, for me, that's been something that's really hard. And so I, I do it and then I practice it or, you know, I, I, um, go skiing instead some days, or I like this morning, it was really icy and I was supposed to do a workout. And so I was like, do I wait to do the workout until it's less icy and I have like better times or do I just do it? And then I just accept it. And so I was like, Meh, I'm going to have fun. I'm just going to accept that it's going to be a shit workout. Um, so I, I guess for me, it's a lot of verbal verbalizing it and thinking of my intention and then honoring it. Yeah. I love that. And like you've been saying too, just like continually checking in with where you're at and making decisions based on that. So that's awesome. Um, and then I also want to ask you what your proudest running accomplishment is to date. And it can be as little or big as um, you want, but just anything that kind of sticks out as being a really special moment in your running journey. I'm just thinking there's, so, there's like so many real experiences that I, I don't know that I could pick hard to choose just one, one, like each <laughs> run has even on like those crappy three mile runs that you're like, is this really only three miles? Like I feel grateful for that experience because I'm as corny as this is, and I'm not enjoying it in the moment, but I'm learning. Um, but I, I mean, yeah, there've been a, I guess I'm someone who like never, I put out my intention there to try these things and I never know how it's going to end up. Even though I've done these big adventures, I'm like beforehand, I get really nervous. I'm like, I don't know. And I tell myself I can do it. And then I keep telling myself I can do it, but I, I'm honest that like, sometimes I doubt it. And I, you know, so I, every time I'm able to accomplish something new, it's like this level of excitement. I was like, wow, look what my body did. Like my legs ran 140 miles. Like that, even if it was a shit race, like how amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah, I think that I couldn't pick just one. Um, I think the experience of running is, is an amazing life lesson corny, but also like, I feel like we've had the whole scope of like really serious conversations, really corny. Like, can I add in some funny in here? Like this is totally no, serious this is for me. No, this is great. <laughs> no, I love it. Um, that's so great. And yeah, like you said, anytime you go out, whether it be like a three mile run or a hundred miler, it's like, you can always learn something. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, and how did your running adapt then last year during COVID or did it adapt? Um, do you have any races planned or were you, yeah. How did it look for you in 2020? So I'm actually with running plans, not type A at all. I'm an adventure junkie and yeah, like, yeah. I didn't really have any races on the board yet. I was just kind of like, well, I love running. It was, so it was hard for, for a time there when they were closing trails down that yeah. felt really, really jarring to me because that's like, that's my temple. And I couldn't imagine like having to run circles around our sidewalks and like people were running inside their houses. And I was like, yeah. okay, I, I love running, but like, that's my line. I will not run inside my house. 
I will not run my backyard. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's like two to me, like getting on that line of disorder for my own brain works fine for other people. Um, so that like that three weeks was challenging. And then there was this skate park that was open and it ha- there's like two peaks in it. And so me and my best friend, we'd go out there a couple of times a week and we would just <laughs> did like every other route that we could do. And so we like figured out like, oh, we're going to cross over these peaks and like do these crazy peaks and go directionally differently. And then we're going to go as fast as we can. And so we actually had a lot of fun doing that. Um, So I feel really fortunate that running has been that constant. Not that I think you should rely solely on running, but during COVID running for a lot of us wasn't taken away. Um, And it sucks that races were canceled. And I strongly believe like running should be more than just racing for me. I'm, I, I completely agree. I'm all for racing and I think it's, it's great for community, but I, there's nothing better than an adventure run weekend with your friends or anything like that. So I actually didn't race at all last year either. And just like all the, just the weekend running adventures, fast packing trips and stuff. There's something really special about that too. So yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask. And then I was like, wait, you're not interviewing her. You can't <laughs> her about her. <laughs> I'm like, so what do you do? <laughs> Want to be friends? <laughs> yeah, no, we will. We will we'll connect after this for sure. <laughs> um, awesome. So I guess I just have one final question for you. Um, why do you think it's important for women to be out on the trails and going after um, these running objectives, whether it be a race, just a 5k on the trail, a um, hundred miler, why is it important for more women to be on the trails? The first thing that comes to my mind is like, why not? And then, yeah. you know, like there, for so many years, myself included, I've been told what I can't do. I've been told why I'm not good enough and maybe not even intentionally, but the messages through society, especially living a non-traditional life. I'm 34. I live in my van half the time. I do these crazy adventures and I cannot tell you how many times people have said, you're missing out on what women should do. And we get to decide that. And I think that's so amazing that like women are so strong and capable and don't necessarily have the same guidance that males do to be introduced to this stuff, which is why I'm really excited you guys are offering a scholarship because it it doesn't really exist or it hasn't really existed that, you know, like women are just as capable, if not differently capable. So yeah, yeah. why not? I love that. I feel like that is the best place to wrap it up because you put that together so eloquently of why can't we like, you know, that's, yeah, that's so great. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I guess I just want to thank you so much for having this conversation. Um, we'll continue connecting after for sure. Um, so like since I asked to be my friend live. <laughs> this is, this no is great. Sure. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so awesome. Um, Yeah, so I guess with that too, I'll just speak a little bit about our Women's Adventure Scholarship. Um, So it is open now until March 21st. And it basically gives, we asked women three different questions and it gives the opportunity for three women to come on um, three of our different trips. So we have our stage style trips, we have rendezvous style, and we have our Sawtooth Women's Backcountry Adventure. um, And that's a women's only trip. Uh, So with that, we have all of our applicants answer the questions and then we choose nine finalists and then from those nine finalists we ask you to write an essay and once we have your short running essay we'll choose three finalists and again applications are until March 21st so coming up this Sunday so if you're a woman watching this we would love you to to apply and um, hurry up ladies yeah (laughs) hurry up and um awesome I just want to thank you again so so much for having this conversation um hearing your voice, your experiences. I want to just encourage you to continue doing the work that you're doing, um, both on both on a personal level and with your coaching. It sounds amazing. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it.
Gracias.